All right, so this video is going to be about combustion analysis. And typically what we're talking about when we do combustion analysis is we run a combustion reaction and we just analyze the products of the combustion reaction. And then based on the results of analyzing the products of the combustion reaction, we can make conclusions about the compound that we originally uh, burned. So combustion reactions have the following form. You have some compound that contains carbon, hydrogen, and perhaps oxygen. It doesn't have to contain oxygen, but it definitely needs to have carbon and hydrogen in it. And what you do is you burn it in O2 gas, and the products are CO2 and H2O. So these things in red, the O2, the CO2, and the H2O, those are the same for every combustion reaction. So what we're going to do is we're going to work through a problem in which we try to determine the empirical formula of a compound from combustion analysis. So suppose I carry out a combustion reaction with a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen and I end up getting that the mass of CO2 which is one of the products that I weighed out was 1.83 grams and then the mass of the other product H2O is 0 0.901 grams. So what we need to do is we need to try to figure out the empirical formula of our compound that has carbon and hydrogen, so using just using these things. So remember that the empirical formula shows the relative numbers of atoms of each element, and therefore the relative numbers of moles of each element in a compound. So in other words, what we need to do is we need to convert the masses of CO2 and H2O. We've got to convert those into moles. So I'm going to set up two conversion factors. So for this first conversion factor, I'm going to put grams of CO2 on the bottom, and I'm going to put moles of CO2 on top. Likewise with the water, I'm going to put grams of H2O on the bottom. I'm going to put moles of H2O on the top. And then now it's just a matter of looking up the molar masses of CO2 and H2O, which can be found from the periodic table, which I've already done. So the molar mass of CO2, that's... 44.01 grams per mole and then for water it's 18.02 grams per one mole. So now we have moles of CO2 and moles of H2O. But remember we need moles of carbon and we, we need moles of hydrogen if we want to try to find the empirical formula. So the next step sort of requires us to examine our reaction a little bit more closely. So if you look back at the reaction equation, notice that our products are CO2 and H2O. CO2 is the only product that contains carbon. Likewise, H2O is the only product that contains hydrogen. Therefore, all of the CO2 that is produced here in our products, all, all of the carbon from that CO2 has to come from our, our, our compound in question. Same thing with hydrogen. Since the only product is uh, water, the only product that has hydrogen is water, all of our hydrogen must come from our compound in question. So that's going to help us uh, solve this problem. So now what we're going to do is we're going to set up a couple of more conversion factors. And instead of moles of CO2 and moles of H2O, we want moles of carbon and we want moles of hydrogen that are in our original compound. So I'm going to, at the bottom here I'm going to put moles of CO2 and on, on the top, I'm going to just put moles of carbon. On the bottom, I'll have moles of H2O. And on the top, I'm just going to have moles of hydrogen. And then all you have to do is just examine the chemical formulas of CO2 and H2O. And uh, within those, you can get a conversion factor from the compound to one of the elements. So for a CO2 molecule, for every one CO2 molecule, we have one carbon atom. So that means for every one mole of CO2, we have one mole of carbon. And then with the water, for every H2O molecule, we have two hydrogen uh, atoms. So that means for every one mole of H2O, we're going to have two moles of hydrogen. So if we go through, let's just make sure our units cancel. So we have grams of CO2 canceling, we have moles of CO2 canceling, we're left with just moles of carbon here. 
we have grams of H2O canceling, we have moles of H2O canceling, and we're left with just moles of hydrogen here, so that's good. And if I solve this, I'll get that the uh, amount of carbon in moles that's in our original compound is equal to 0 0.0416 moles of carbon. And then for our hydrogen, the solution to this calculation is 0 0.100 moles, and that is of hydrogen. So these two things here, these two values are what we're going to use to determine the empirical formula of our compound. So I'm going to give myself a little bit more room here. We know how many moles of carbon we have. We know how many moles of hydrogen we have. Now it's just a matter of determining the empirical formula. So I'm going to rewrite uh, our values here. So it looks like we have 0 0.0416 moles of carbon. And then we have 0 0.100 moles of hydrogen. And I can erase that. So now what we have to do, we have the molar amounts of each of these two things, but now what we need to do to, to determine the empirical formula is determine the greatest common factor of these two amounts. And generally the way that we uh, find the greatest common factor of these two amounts is by dividing by the smallest value. So if we divide by the smallest value, if, if that gives us whole number uh, multiples, then we're done. If it doesn't give us whole number multiples, then we have to divide by one half of the smallest value. If that doesn't work, if that doesn't give us whole number multiples, we have to divide by a third of the smallest value. And if that doesn't work, we have to continue and continue and continue on until we get nothing but whole number uh, multiples all around. So that's how to find the greatest common factor. And so what we're going to do is we're going to identify which one of these is the smallest value and then divide by it. Looks to me like the smallest value between 0.0416 and 0.1 is going to be 0.0416. So that means I'm going to divide both of these by 0.0416 and then 0.0416 moles and moles. And then whatever the solutions to these division problems are, those are going to be the subscripts in our chemical formula, our empirical formula. So we're going to end up getting C something, H something, right? We get C something, H something. And if we divide 0 0.0416 by 0 0.0416, that's going to give us C1. And then if we carry out this calculation here, 0.1 divided by 0 0.0416, that's going to get H2.0 or 2.40. So that's a basic uh, pseudo formula that we have. Well, is 2.40 a whole number? No, it's not. So that means that dividing by the smallest value didn't work. So now we have to divide by one half of the smallest value. And then see if that works. So if I divide 0 0.0416 divided by half of 0 0.0416, I'll get C2 H something. And then if I do this calculation here, I'll get the H is equal to 4.80. But again, 4.80 isn't close enough to 5 to be considered a whole number, so this didn't work either. Now we have to divide by a third of the smallest value. And if we divide the moles of carbon by a third of the moles of carbon, we'll get C3. If we carry out this calculation here for the hydrogen, we'll end up getting H 7.21. 7.21 is not close enough to 7 to be considered a whole number, so this didn't work either. 
and now what we have to do is divide by a, a quarter of the smallest value, so one fourth. And if I divide the moles of carbon by a quarter of the moles of carbon, I'll end up getting C4, H something. If I solve this calculation for H, I will get 9.62. 9.62 is not close enough to 10 to be considered a whole number, so this didn't work either. And now we have to divide by a fifth of the smallest value. Let's see if I can get a marker that works. I'll just do it in blue. A fifth of the smallest value. If I divide the moles of carbon by a fifth of the moles of carbon, I'll get C5. And if I divide the moles of hydrogen by a fifth of the moles of carbon, I'll get H12.02. So our formula is C5H12.02. Now the question is, is 12.02 close enough to 12 to be considered a whole number? And so that is our question. So in general, to determine if something is close enough to be considered a whole number, so let's call our number in question, we'll call that x. If x is between plus or minus one-tenth of the whole number, then, then it can be considered to be a whole number. So that, mean, that means if x is in between, if, we're, if our target value is 12 for our whole number, then x can be between 11.9 and 12.1. So if our number falls between these two numbers, then we can consider it to be a whole number. And it does. 12.02 does fall between 11.9 and 12.1. Therefore, our formula is going to be C5H12. So that is our empirical formula. Now, our, our molecular formula could be C10H24 or uh, C15, H36, or whatever. It could be uh, any um, integer, any whole number times this can be the molecular formula, but this is the empirical formula. So that is how to determine the empirical formula of a, of a compound that contains carbon and hydrogen using combustion analysis.